morning. Nice to have you. I love the idea that you set up and you initiated this initiative to be closer to the people of the company. And before I come here today, I, I think I searched a little bit about you, you know, more to go into the depths of your personality. But I would like today to understand, is there something that people do not know or is in public knowledge that you would like to share today? Um, <coughs> I mean, there's quite a few things. If you want to talk about my hobbies, I love diving with big sharks, four meters, five meter long, uh, free, free diving, of course, so the sharks come really up close and personal. Uh, it's, uh, you know that you're at the edge of sort of life and death, and surprisingly, it's the most calming experience you can ever have. So that's something most people don't know about me. Uh, I used to love racing, mm. had too many accidents, so my wife stopped me. I can't race anymore, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are some things that most people don't know about me. Wow, so sharks in the business and out of the business <laughs> is the thing that you want to go to. So you're a very bold guy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, adrenaline junkie is the term. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah. I love it. We're going to go <laughs> back to that. And I th I know you got an award last night. I read it uh, on my news feed um, from the Family Business Council where you Correct, paid yes. for that. Can you give us a little bit about what happened last night? Yeah, so they approached us a couple of weeks back. Um, they wanted me to give them some more information about what we're doing in the metaverse area. And they basically have an award for innovation uh, in family businesses in the region. So I actually explained to them what we're doing, uh, how we got the idea, and then what was the business case for it, and how we're implementing it. And it was it was quite random. I mean, I didn't think I was going to win it. It was just a last minute thing. Uh, and then surprisingly, they contacted me and they said, you know, you've been selected, you need to attend. So it was, it was exciting. Okay, yeah. So congrats, first of all. And Thank you. the second thing is that Yes, you have a great leader in this company. And my thing, since we are talking about Metaverse, let's continue a little bit in that. You put a lot of effort in Metaverse. You put a lot of effort in how technology is the backbone and the foundation of what is next. Uh, we talk about physical world, digital world being together, integrated. Um, and, you know, you live in both worlds and you have your digital twin. So how the Mac is getting into that and how do you see the future of your business, especially in the real estate here in the region? So it's no secret, globally, most businesses are switching to a e-commerce model. Uh, you can even order your coffee today in the morning and have it uh, come to your door. We, b we think real estate is no different. Uh, it's headed down that path, but the construction and real estate industry has been quite slow to adopt technology historically. So if you look at even uh, investment firms, prop tech is actually their smallest allocation because it's quite hard to digitize the entire process. Uh, what, what happened with us is uh, when COVID happened, you know, the world shut down. <coughs> Dubai was no exception. We had to continue to sell. Uh, we were lucky that in around February, when the outbreak first started, before the world thought it was going to be a global issue, we prepared ourselves. So we actually onboarded Zooms and team, uh, Microsoft uh, Teams, Zoom, we trained all of our sales team and CRM teams to operate remotely before the lockdown started. Uh, so when the lockdowns happened, we were quite prepared. And we said, OK, we need to still generate revenue. So we started selling online. Uh, so imagine someone sitting on the other end of the world. Uh, you're having a Zoom call with him or a Teams call, and you're trying to sell him property. Uh, they were sales, surprisingly, uh, quite few. And the conversions were quite low. Uh, but as time went by, what happened is we had a product called uh, a la carte villas. Mm -hmm. So we had actually created this product for the sales offices so that they can customize the villas with the uh, customers. The sales team can customize on the customers uh, to make it a more immersive experience for the customer. What we noticed is in those months, actually, our online sales jumped. Uh, at the time, I was in charge of the direct uh, sales team. So I called the head of the direct team. I said, what's going on, you know? Why the sudden jump? Turns out they were using this platform. Uh, and we didn't think of it as something that's going to enable online sales. And it ended up helping us with the online sales. So we realized, OK, this is what we need to do is create products 
to enable the sales team to enhance the experience with the customer while selling online. And that's what took us down the road of, uh, route of the digital twins. Uh, today we sell over 100 million dirhams a month online. Uh, our conversions, which were half a percent, are now one and a half percent. Uh, our company average on the digital channel is 8%. So we still have a lot, a long yeah. way to go. And that's why we think creating these digital twins is going to help us in a big way when it comes to the online sales channel. Amazing results. And by the way, I have seen the transformation of companies trying to get into the metaverse and the digital world. And I have a question here because it was a few months ago I was presenting to, um, I would not say the company, of course, and the industry uh, about metaverse. And they were looking at me like I was going to attack them and kill them. <laughs> and no, this, by the way, this is true. Okay, It was uh, close to December. So it's not very far from what it is now. And they questioned me about, you don't build trust if you are on a virtual interaction compared to how you are in a physical world. And I said, no, this is not the truth because you, it depends who you talk to and how you have set up the whole thing. What do you think about building trust? Because buying a real estate, it's a high value item, okay? It's not like a, I'm gonna buy something I don't care if I, it doesn't go well. How do you build trust and how do you see this trust? Um, so when it, com when it comes to real estate, it's quite different than buying a t-shirt online. Uh, we don't, we're not building this platform to replace the human interaction. We're building it to further enhance the capabilities of our sales team to communicate with the customer. So today when the salesperson is getting on a call with a customer at the end of the world, he's just looking at this person and surprisingly he's, uh, the sales team is able to build that relationship to be able to sell to this person. We think the metaverse is just going to further enhance the capability of the team to build that trust. Because you're no longer just seeing the person, you're going to be seeing the type of product that you're buying. Uh, we're actually having our MVP on November 25th. So there will be a launch of a major project and we're planning on launching our full metaverse edition of this project with the physical launch. So the team will actually be able to see that uh, live in action. And what we're building has not been done before in the industry. So there's a lot of VR experiences, but what we're doing is you get the basic VR experience. It's all built in Unreal, so it's very high end. But we're going one step further where post the sales process, you can actually log in. So suppose you've bought this apartment in the real world. Okay. Only you will be able to log into your apartment in the digital, uh, digital twin. So when it comes to furnishing your house, say it's six months before your building is ready, we're going to tie up with partners so you can log in. You see your empty space, but you can digitally furnish it. And with the click of a button, you can order all of your goods from whichever interior design or company you decide to use. And by the time you come to take handover, your furniture is actually ready to be put into your unit. So these are th things which people aren't thinking of today, which is what we're building for. We're building for the future right now. And it's creating this entire um, immersive integrated platform, which uh, focuses on the customer more than anything else. You're actually building the, the perspective people can have and you extend what can actually happen and what can be, there's no, there's no limit in what you can achieve into that. Do you have a digital twin? What do you mean? Uh, do you have an NFT? Do you have Me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have I mean, I have you are very busy. You need to have someone to be doing things for you without <laughs> you being there. <laughs> you know, I do. I dabbled in it. I believe when you want to, when you want to do something, you need to learn it from the ground up. So when the entire Web3 space, actually Web3 is a term which was invented by a firm called Andreessen Horowitz. They're one of the biggest funds in the world and they spent a lot of money in marketing to create this whole concept of Web, Web2, Web3. It didn't exist before. Uh, I think where we were last year is similar to where the technology industry was in 1999. You had this huge tech boom where everything flew in value and everything came crashing down. That's the point we're at today. Now, 15 years from then, the Amazons and the Apples and the Microsoft survived and thrived, but it took them 15 years. And 99% of the companies didn't make it. So I think people need to keep that in mind when they look at the space and avoid the speculation. So don't think just because something's going up in value is gonna keep going up in value. Uh, be very cautious when investing with crypto or with NFTs. That's very true and actually you have to be very aware and we have the capability to be aware, we have the capability to go deeper and look for information. 
you smile a lot. I saw that now. So and you always, you also say that. But that's not what people who work with me say <laughs> in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see hands raised that if he smiles a lot or not? Um, and you say that by smiling, it's a it's a it's a global language to to you know communicate with people. How this is part of the way you're, you're leading your business and your personal life. And what does this mean for you, for people and culture in the company? I'll tell you, we actually come from a culture which was not the best culture over the last few years. In 2020, 2020, we took a decision. We need to change the culture of the company. So we historically have operated very much as silos. Departments don't speak to each other. They're very competitive, cutthroat. Senior management would want to throw the other person under the bus. And which is actually quite common in large, aggressive corporations, uh, especially with high growth. Uh, we've been trying to change. How we're going about doing that is actually we're trying to break down those silos, silos and make the teams work together better. Uh, when the team's working together, naturally the overall environment is better, people are happier, and when people are happier, they're more motivated to do a better job. Um, we've just introduced now uh, flexible work hours, where before we used to have everyone coming at the same time. I think from November 1st, it's rolling out. We're going to give them flexibility. Uh, we have a work from home policy. It's not a lenient work from home policy. We believe people should be in the office. But when it comes to emergencies or special cases, we do approve them. But if you ask any business leader, he'll tell you changing culture is the hardest thing to do in any company. So we don't think it's going to be a quick win or a easy success but we are pushing and trying as best we can to make the teams work together better, uh, to be more productive inside and outside the office. And how do you communicate that internally to, to, to tell to the people that you know we're changing, we're going um, you know, in an advanced way where we're trying to be more representative of what happened around the world and making change that, as you said, you remove the silos and you become more integrated. How do you communicate that to the people in the company? So we, we just had a new head of HR join us three weeks ago. Uh, her main task is to build collaboration within the teams. Uh, emails is one thing, but I don't believe in emails. I mean, just sending out an email doesn't mean anything. You probably won't even read it. It's actually on the ground events. Uh, we have something running right now, which is the Damak Active Campaign, which is starting. It focuses on sports, different activities to bring people together. We're working on something for the World Cup, setting up a large space for the teams to come and uh, mingle and have like a fun fair for the children, etc. in Damak Hills too. So we're focusing more on uh, personal live interactions of bringing people together uh, because I don't believe emails and just making big messages really works. I think uh, we talk about the virtual world, which is important, but we always talk about communication which is on the spot, is snackable, it's easy to understand, you don't have to put so much effort in order to look nice. And emails, uh, I think, are overrated. Yeah, yeah big time. They're overrated <laughs> and there's no time for our emails. Let's go back to you. Um, and you had a long journey in this family company, you know, and I hope that you don't mind what I'm going to say, but people think that people like you that are entitled to what they do and they can just get it easily, they have the money, they can be in front of other people, it's so easy for their lives and it's so much nice. But at the end, you are an entrepreneur or a corporate person that took it's, things? It's a mix of two. It's a mix, huh? So, <coughs> first of all, entitlement for us doesn't exist in the family. So, when I went to university, for example, most people, you know, when they speak to me, they say, oh, you probably went, you had a nice big penthouse, you used to party as much as you want, do whatever you like. Uh, I had an allowance which was the exact same as someone going on a scholarship. Uh, I lived a normal student life. When I came back, I was actually on the construction sites mm -hmm. for my first two years. Uh, boots, pants, shirt, uh, learning how buildings actually go up. Uh, then I went through cycles, procurement. Uh, I went through the whole construction cycle first. Then I got involved in marketing, sales, projects, etc. Uh, so in the family, the way my father uh, raises us is you have to work for what, uh, what you want. So that's where I built my experience when you, you talk about entrepreneur versus yeah. corporate. I built that experience there. But at the same time, I had three startups. Uh, I sold one. 
I still have two that which I operate. Uh, I'm launching two more. So we're in I'm we're encouraging the family. You need to do your role in the family business, but don't be afraid to go and innovate and try something else. Now it means double the effort from you as a person, because <laughs> you have to do your day job and work on your own project. But I'd say it's a mix of two. We live in an era that where we break stereotypes, so it's not black and white, right or wrong. And I just want to bring one of my personal experiences. When my son went to Germany to play football, as he was still a student, and at that moment, Greece was not in a very good financial situation. They were asking him if he had money to do the trip, which means that there are biases like the ones you said now, that they put people in a corner, and they don't take them from there unless they prove themselves differently. And this is what you did. You play a lot of sports, right? You uh, do a lot of sports, or you used to do a lot of sports, or you still do a lot of sports. It's a mix. It's a mix. So I go to the gym every morning. I start my day at 5 a.m. So you're the 5 a.m. club? or yeah, it's okay. Yeah, definitely. So I start 5 a.m. Week, weekend or weekday. I'm up at 5. Uh, I go to the gym from 6 to 8. Then in the office by 9, home by 7. Uh, I sleep by 10. So uh, I've been on this lifestyle for a long time. There was maybe the last one year up until June of this year where I deviated. I was sleeping late, waking up late, but it makes a big difference. If there's one advice I'd give everyone is just move your clock back three hours and get up at 5 a.m. You get much more done. You get like today, we all woke up very early and we by, <laughs> end, by 9, 30, guys, we're going to have finished that. We're going to say, okay, I had a very accomplished day. Can sport help you become or improve your leadership skills? hundred percent. I mean, if you play a team sport, f you, you can realize from the word it makes you a team player. You can't play football, 11 people, and score all the goals on your own if you don't have the midfielder supporting you and you need your goalkeeper to be protecting the, the base. So sports really plays a big role. And then even if you just do any activity, I think when you, when you get the body stimulated, it naturally gets your mind stimulated. You relax, uh, you de-stress, um, if I wake up at uh, 8 o'clock and get to the office by 9, I have a miserable day. But if I manage to do thir at least 30 minutes of sports in the morning and then get to the gym, your mood is better, you're more awake, you're more fresh. You don't need three coffees to get through the day, you know? So it makes, it makes a big difference. We had three coffees today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I do agree with you. Sports is an amazing way also to improve your personality and show skills that you never thought you had in the past. So, yeah, I love that. And it's good for building kids as well and how they can actually um, go into life. And I will go into the conversation about family. I think you are a, um, a young parent. You are a yeah, yes. father. father. So that's amazing. What is family for you? Not only for the family you're creating, but the family you already have around you. We, we are a very close-knit family. So even growing up, I remember back then the weekends were Thursday, Friday, and I couldn't go out with my friends on Thursday. It was family day. I used to hate it growing up, I love you that. know, but uh, Thursday's family day. You come to family dinner, you go home. So Friday, there's always family lunch on Friday. And we still operate the same way. So even today, on Fridays, we all go from the, from the mosque to my dad's house. We have lunch. We come back to the office. That hasn't changed. Uh, Saturdays, everyone's in my father's house all day. Uh, so the family's quite close. Um, summer holidays, again, family's always traveling together. Uh, and I think that's important. That's what brings joy to your life. You know, more important than friends is always family. They're always there for you. Uh, and we've been brought up that way. So even with my son. Uh, How old is he? He's 14 months now. <laughs> yeah, he's 14 months. I just saw him. He, he can't go anywhere, by the way. He can't go out for dinner or uh, see no. his friends. He, he, he was just you. going to nursery, so I just saw him. He was he, he puts his backpack on, says ba 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 ba, runs out the house. But um, you know, we're blessed. My sister has a daughter. She's 17 months. There's six months almost between them, and they're growing up together. They go to nursery together. So it reminds me of me and my sister when we were younger. Me and my sister are very very close. Family is very important, and we we are a very close knit family. I love that because uh, I'm very into that. And I say to my kids, Saturday, Sunday, you we have to be together. Yeah. They're not with me now because they're um, studying abroad, but we're going to do family vacations every year. Every from year. From now yeah, on, yeah. no matter what, <laughs> you're not escaping me. So 
yeah, I'm a Greek mother as well. I'm going to take you into very rapid way of giving you questions. So I'm going to give you a question. I'm going to give you two alternatives. And you have to choose one or the other. You can say both, Eleni, but that's the easy way. <laughs> so I would prefer if you say one or the other. So entrepreneur or corporate leader? Corporate leader, more Corp than entrepreneur. Mix of two. I have to go with both of them. You have there. to go by yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> People or technology driven? Technology. Technology. Exercise the mind or the body? Both. Body, yeah. Drive a car no, or. No, no, that was both. Uh, both. That has <laughs> to be both. Yeah, yeah. Agree, <laughs> agree. Um, drive a car or autonomous car? Drive a car. Drive a car, yeah, I agree with you. High growth or sustainable growth? High growth. High growth. Mm. You read at school. <laughs> Globalization or regionalization? Globalization. Globalization. Street food or fine dining? Street food. Street food, amazing. Physical or digital world? Physical. Physical. Work-life balance or work-life integration? Integration for some people, balance for most people. Okay. For me, integration because yeah, they come together. Busy. Yeah. Strong vision or strong mission? Mission. Mission. Is mission. It's, it has a purpose. Mission. Yeah. And is the execution as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Ali. I thank mean, you. Uh, and thank you for the honor to be here with you today thank you for and kicking off this amazing series of Empower Hour by the Mac. Thank, thank you, you very guys. much. Thank you for coming.